sponsored by Wizards of the Coast. And we're back. Oh my gosh, I love that episode. You guys really were thinking about that puzzle so much. It was so great. Yeah. Yeah, I had to keep kind of giving them clues. Yeah. Yeah, because I kept rolling intelligence. <laughs> and like, it's like an intelligent person would. <laughs> right. And you get to do your motion, and you're like, "We're doing it, right, left, right, right." <laughs> and yeah. we're moving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Ichabod's mixing up his left and right. <laughs> nice. But we, we we're there. We're getting there. Perhaps my favorite, like you know, very like throwaway joke moment was Lilith, Lilith saying, uh, uh, "What is she just like? I put on a bit of holiday weight." Holiday weight, <laughs> carrying a little holiday. Weight. <laughs> yes. Like, I so want to know which holiday she was talking about. <laughs> it, it was a very fantasy, uh, you know, Ren Fair esque. Oh god, we did an episode of Laurie Cheneau on like holidays in the Forgotten Realm, so it's one of those. Ooh, yeah. Fun. There's I a like lot of that them. Idea. I, like I know. Idea. Those can really they tie into like you know the 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 idea of there's like there's a calendar and there's like a living world like going on so like I love doing yeah. stuff like that yeah like I want to know what kind of holidays people celebrate in Chult like exactly. what are the cultural customs there yeah Ooh. you should ask your guides uh, yeah we like. just played a game where there was a unicorn festival yes that was a lot of fun shout out to Kelly for DMing that for us <laughs> go Kelly <laughs> so tell me more about this unicorn festival <laughs> oh oh it was so much fun. Um, everyone was going around with these magical, like, colorful yeah. unicorn horns. Who was it who really wanted one? Rachel. Rachel. She really, really wanted the fanciest unicorn. Of she's course. A, she wanted the most expensive. Yeah. She saw some other rich women with these <laughs> unicorn horns, and she had to go. Just prickled her ego. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, and then we, I was just obsessed with food and streamers. I had, like, streaming little acorns. There were leaves. That, yeah. So you could steal leaves. Like, the children were running around stealing leaves and throwing them behind, and it created this whole um, The leaves trail. follow you when you run. Ooh. And I was like, I have to have And those. it was this game where all the kids were playing and stealing from one another, and Alice just got right Joined in there. In. She stole some kids' <laughs> leaves, and then she got her leaves stolen. Yeah, but I blended right in with all the other little kids because I'm two and a half feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Fun. Of course, you were obsessed with the food, too. Like, you were like, oh, yeah, I'm into this food. Oh, yeah. What's happening with this yeah. festival? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the bread? Oh, there was, like, honey oatmeal bread, I think. Olive. And then olive bread. And then we had um, crispy cinnamon crumble some things. Like, oh, man, my mouth is watering now just thinking about it. <laughs> Um, yeah. I love fantasy tropes that like de delve into like what is being served on the table. Like that's so yes. interesting to me and there will be like pages and pages of it, right? Yes. So good. Uh, all right. So let's jump into some questions that people are throwing out. Um, they're saying boring tech questions, but those are exciting tech questions, I think. Um, so boring tech questions. I know more about like how, how you guys make the episode. Uh, so oh, this is probably more sure. for your Why kid. Why not? How long does it take to edit an episode uh, with the pans, close-ups, wide angles, and all that? Like, does that make it more time-consuming? It took a long time. Well, <laughs> see, what I did first was I edited the whole thing together. And then, so all, I don't even know, two and a half, three hours of of edited footage, which means we started with, like, you know, because we cut out probably – half an hour of like you know breaks and and um me being like oh what's the rule kind of edit that stuff out so yeah it took a really i was locked in my room for <laughs> a few weeks um editing away editing away <laughs> uh but i did for the first season i did all the sound effects too luckily this season i had someone else doing that for us um shout out to shakar shack Shahar. Shout out to Shakar. Shakar. Uh, shout out to Shaq. He's awesome. Poor one. Um, so he's been doing all the sound effects and editing the sound. So that was good. Um, that helps. Yeah. And then each week it takes me, you know, now that it's all edited, I just have to make sure that the color's right. And I have to make sure that um, the sound and everything, the music and everything kind of goes together. And then I edit a little preview of the upcoming episode, which takes, you know, an hour or something. Nice. I, li I like that way of working, though, where you get it into like one kind of cohesive two and a half, three hours bit, and then you can chunk it up after that once you get the sound. Yeah, well, I didn't know how much we were going to have, so I wanted to kind of have the episodes, you know, relatively similar in length. So once I knew what we had 
total because you know it's all unplanned it's all improv so we don't never know what we're gonna get yeah. so once i had the whole thing in total then i could say okay so if we're doing 10 episodes they're gonna be about 14 minutes each nice cool Thanks for that question, Farnich, uh, in the uh, in the in the, in the uh, Twitch chat here. Um, here's one for you, Alice. Uh, Nosy the Bard asks, uh, "I made a character heavily inspired by Rowan. Uh, how Aww. do you see your character and other characters' progression as people?" Hmm. Ooh. Um, well, when Rowan started. She was fresh out of the woods where she'd been living for like the past 20 years. So the first game I played with these ladies where I meet them, which we did not film, it was just us playing at home. Um, I like barely had a voice because I was thinking like I probably haven't used my voice in about two decades um, because I can talk with animals and there were no other humanoid people around. And so why would I why would I talk? I personally love to see how many days I can go without using my voice. Um, I love really just not talking. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a typer <laughs> and I'm a major introvert. So I love I love when I can just be alone and, and just like not use my voice. How long have you made? How many how many days total has been the record? Three, like wow. three full days, which I think is pretty, pretty impressive. impressive. Yeah. Yeah. When, um, when did you do that when you were young or you been living while I've been living in LA? Wow. Yeah. Like, because I can communicate mostly through email or text, like a whole day and a half went by and I was like, ooh, I'm going to see how long I can keep this going. Um, That's intense. Was Gray around? No, Gray wasn't around. My boyfriend. <laughs> I was no. like, <laughs> I know that would be hard. Yeah. Um, no, there's so many more languages you could express, uh, uh, you know, e to each other, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a um, challenge. But, <laughs> yes, but anyway, Rowan, I think she started off being really scared of people, of crowds, of towns. Like, I, my character didn't drink when all the girls would go to the tavern and order pints of mead and, and ale. And um, I was, like, very just shy and kind of proper. And also season one of Girls That's Glory, I didn't have as much makeup on. And mm. now that, like, I feel like Rowan's relaxed into her crew, she's discovered she can be a little bit of a girly girl. And she likes the spark sparkles. Like, I think she kind of has a secret girl crush on Lala, Lemon Boots, with oh. all of her sparkly, glitter, pixie fun. Um, and I think I'm, I found a lot more, uh, it's interesting watching these episodes from step from outside being in the game, because I've noticed that Rowan is, she has like pretty much as moral a compass as Moira, who's like the noble paladin, who's very like by the book and by the rules. Right. Um, and I see that in Rowan too, where before I just thought she was like, a little bit more more neutral. I could go either way, but I think my character is a goody goody deep mm. down, <laughs> um, and I think probably one of the more serious ones, uh, like Sujata slash Ichabod is obviously the hilarious one, and Lala slash Erica is very um, always conniving to like loot and and get things, and then um, Kim, fabulous DM at all the characters. <laughs> And then Lilith, she's like sassy, just wants to seduce everyone and eat meat, which Rowan's a vegetarian. I don't know if that really comes out in the games that make it to the air, but like I'm not a vegetarian, but Rowan is like. Well, right, because you, you're forced friends. Why would you eat your yes, forced friends? Exactly. They're the only people I talked to. Why would I do that? Yeah. And I don't have leather armor. I'm saying I have like bark and hemp and like all these other things. Oh, so, that's super cool. Yeah. I, I, that was just a personal choice I made for her, but um, yeah, that's, did I cover all the I think so. I think you answered the yeah. question. It was okay. definitely like a progression, uh, which, you know, you can, now, now that I know that, I can see the kind of, you know, touchstones that from your character and like that. Like, oh yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. I've just been, become a lot more serious. Unless there's like unicorn fancy leaves following me around, then I'm a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Good question. Thank you, uh, Nosy the Bard, for that one. I loved it. Um, and we were, we mentioned Ichabod, uh, so this one uh, cap, uh, question is from Captain Monk. Uh, do you think any of Ichabod's womanizing will come back to bite him in the ass? And sub question: Will we see Pookie again? Oh, I thought about how it would be fun to bring Pookie back at some point. Um, for was, for it, it was is Pookie in was was he wasn't in this series right? That was in the no, yeah. Pookie was in season one. So for uh, people who don't know, who is Pookie? So Pookie is a wizard that um, Ichabod seduces in season one, and he, you know, he gets her. 
he gets what he wants from her and then he's like i'm not looking for a relationship and she's like but you told me you loved me um she's a very powerful wizard and he screwed her over and she was very angry and she summoned her unicorn and rode off into the sunset he should definitely come back yeah i think pookie pookie should come back yeah at some point nice. uh, yeah and i do think ichabod's womanizing ways will like there we've had a few moments i can't remember if there are moments that will that will air on this show but yeah i can definitely think of times when when um his flirtatiousness has gotten out of hand and mm. been far more off-putting than beguiling so we'll yeah we'll explore that more yeah <laughs> makes sense good question uh also from captain mike we'll just do a follow-up there will we will we be, will we be seeing gerwin again Gerwin, I know. I forgot Gerwin that day that we were shooting. So Gerwin didn't didn't make it into this season. Make it. Um, but he's still around. He's still around. Actually, hold on. I'll be right Always. back. Yes. <laughs> Got to get a prop. Always good to have the prop. Yeah. <laughs> well, Gerwin's very well. Kim found him at the Renaissance Fair, like right before we shot season one, and we were all just gaga for Gerwin um, <laughs> because he's so cute. She's putting him on right now. Oh, nice. Yeah, there he is. Ooh, here comes Ooh. Gerwin. <laughs> Poor Luna. Don't be scared, Luna. Don't be scared. <laughs> yeah. It's still Hello, mom. <laughs> oh. <Aww. laughs> Hi. Hi, Gerwin. That is adorable. Yes. Um, I have a, a neighbor girl who uh, thinks he's real. <laughs> oh, how old is she? she? She was six or seven. Okay. Mm. Yeah. my I feel like my daughter would, would latch onto that like crazy. Just to be like, oh. it's a, what? It's a, how does it work? It doesn't, is it real? And then she would. Yeah, she would pet it for sure. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you got to get Gerwin to come back. That's amazing. Yeah, Gerwin's great. Soon you'll be doing the entire show in puppets. <laughs> yeah. Usually have like a bodice which he sits on better than my tank top. <laughs> it's not. It's not made for that. Oh, awesome. Well, I, all right. Well, uh, if anybody has any questions for Gerwin, please go ahead and throw them out. And <laughs> he only answers yes and no questions. <laughs> oh my gosh, I feel like people are gonna have so much fun with that. Uh, awesome. Uh, so uh, here, uh, this is a question for you, Alice. Uh, if you had to play any other class, what would it be and why? Oh, I've been so the next character that I think I want to play um, would be a barbarian. I want to I'm making oh. a centaur barbarian. I like um, it. Just because I feel like I have so much fun with the spells of being a druid. Um, I kind of want to know what it's like to have like just strength and like fight in me. And uh, I think that would be, that would be a lot of fun. So I think a barbarian, um, probably more on like the wildish side as you think a barbarian would be. It would be very opposite of, of Rowan. Like I was just saying her like very goody two shoes, like love the animals and like not savagery. Uh, and I feel like it'd just be fun to go kind of to the opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah. And, just play. and that's the cool thing about this game. So mm -hmm. why a centaur, though? That, let me ask you that question. Oh, just because I think it's cool. I like centaurs. <laughs> um, I think they're beautiful. Okay, so in Fantasia, when I was a little kid, there's that one part where there's all these, like, lady centaurs getting ready under the waterfall and oh primping. i know that moment yes mm. and then the dude centaurs are getting all ready and i just thought it was such <laughs> i was like five years old and i thought it was just, i didn't know the word erotic but looking back now i'm like oh that was a very sensual like thing i just thought they were beautiful right. and just so so cool and i i love horses and i think it'd be cool to have like six limbs basically because you got your horse four horse feet and then you still have like up here and I don't know like in my mind I know exactly what the centaur barbarian looks like she's got this wild crazy red hair and she's kind of like a rusty cream palomino and um <laughs> just like Sonia the barbarian but as a centaur oh I love that dude I want to play something that. like that yeah I want to play with that character that sounds fun yeah let's do it all right <laughs> and I, I have to find her accent because I love playing around with with the accents I, I i get liking the centaurs but as a as a red sox fan the fact that a rod uh you know the the player used to play on the on the yankees like also loves centaurs and thinks of himself oh. as a centaur just cracks me that <laughs> <up. laughs> 
himself as a centaur? Yeah, no, somebody asked him a question in the interview, uh, and he's like, yeah, no, that's how I kind of envisioned myself as a, as a centaur. <laughs> and you're like, Dude, whatever helps you play. Cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> it was it was kind of amazing, and at the same time, it was kind of like, uh, okay. So there's all these, like, images of, of A-Rod as a centaur uh, that oh. popped up on the internet after that, which just... Maybe very. I'm gonna have to Google this later. Yeah. You will, and you you probably will be like, oh, okay, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on to more questions. Uh, let's see. Let's go to some of the ones that came on uh, Twitter. Um, so uh, which? Okay. So have you guys been following along with any of the unearthed Arcana stuff that? Uh, Jeremy Crawford and Mike Merle's been putting out. It's like kind of like the, the playtest stuff uh, uh, that comes out. Have you? Probably not. I don't think so. Yeah. Um, well, then in that case, do you, I noticed you guys were playing with minis uh, during this one too. Um, were there any of the the minis uh, that you might have seen that you're like excited about that are, you know that will be coming out? Do you want to see like a centaur mini or like other things like that that you haven't yet I seen that you'd love to see more of? Yeah, I'd love to see a centaur mini. That'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I all the minis. I would love our characters as minis. Yeah, like a little Moira and a little. Nala. My boyfriend sculpted my mini that I actually brought with me to Stream of Annihilation. You can barely see it because it, it was just a proto. He sculpts and makes little action figures and figurines. Oh no way! Um, yeah, and he he really wanted to make me a mini, and so. Uh, I kind of showed him some rough sketches of how I kind of imagined Rowan to look like, and he he made me an awesome miniature. But um, unfor- it was like a prototype, so unfortunately, by the time it got to stream of, of Annihilation, it was falling apart a little bit. Aww. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> He'll make me another <laughs> soon. What does he What does he make it out of? Um, he made it out of this resin. This it's like a clay that turns into like a resin type material, oh, cool. um, like plasticized. It's like I don't, I don't know. We found it at Monster Palooza. I'm so sorry that I'm not remembering the name because the guy who sells it and makes it and he invented it is brilliant. I'm gonna have to look it up and I'll share it later. Okay. Um, yeah, but it was. It's like this gray material that that you. It's moldable like clay, and then it like hardens into this beautiful shiny like really tough material. But the reason why it hadn't quite lasted is I can be kind of rough with my miniatures. And also like some of the wiring on the inside um, didn't quite, it, it, it wasn't it wasn't made to last. It was mm. a prototype. So yeah, he needs to make me the real deal. Yeah. Like, I need to get on him about that. That'd be cool, <laughs> yeah. To like, I don't know if you have to put it in a kiln or whatever to fire it to make sure it's like, you know, stays dry, but yeah. That'd yeah, be fantastic. with a different material, I think you would. And yeah. I think that's the kind I need. My uh, next door neighbor did some 3D printing of uh, D&D miniatures. And I was like, what? Wow. We can do that? Yeah. 3D he, printing is crazy, man. I know. We I know we have a partnership with, um, I forget what it is. Now I'm going to forget the the important stuff. But it's basically like a, uh, a place where you can get the patterns for D&D minis. Um, that someone was transferring to be like readable by a 3D printer, and uh, we were like, "Oh my god, this is so cool!" And Hasbro, our our our, our partner, has like you know the, this this uh, it's called like Playscape or something like that, play play something. Anyway, he found the 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 p- uh, pattern on there, and then he did it with um, glow in the dark polymer. So he printed a glow in the dark D and D miniature. I think it was of uh, Drist with the with the two swords and stuff. It was pretty badass. Fun. I know that. That's going to change everything as soon as we can, like, 3D print stuff like that. Like, what? Yeah. Uh, all right. So, Kim, as a DM, um, and this is obviously different for this because you, you, you pulled story material uh, for this series from, from us, from Tomb of Annihilation. Um, but as a DM, is all of your story material original or do you pull inspiration from other sources? So, I mean, there's always inspiration from things, but um, everything is – until this one has been um, just stuff I made up. Um, But then leading up to this, knowing that we were going to do Cholt, um, I did some of the Out of the Abyss book um, with the girls. And uh, because I'd never actually run anyone else's storyline. I'd always made everything up myself. So knowing that we were going to be doing Tomb of Annihilation, I um, practiced a little with (laughs) out of the abyss and it's fun it's fun i mean even with those the books and tomb of annihilation there's so much information in there that you can take the parts that you like and change things so 
some of the stuff you'll see in this season, you know, I say it's south, but if you actually look in the book, it's it's to the mm -hmm. east, but I just liked it. So I was like, eh, we're going to move it over here for <laughs> my game. Um, so yeah, you can still kind of pick and choose what things you like and you can change things. Um, uh, so yeah, I like, I like doing both ways. It's been fun to have annihilation has been fun because it's, it, they've come up with ideas that I would have never come up with like this, you know, tunnel filled with traps yeah with the crocodile man riddle <laughs> yeah with that riddle so that was what i read what i said was pretty much straight out of the book um so Spo it's spoiler alert <laughs> yeah spoiler alert so <laughs> oops um but yeah so it, it was it's kind of fun to get those ideas as well as making yeah. it up. i think it's a little easier to do my own story because i've created everything so you know. Right, so changing it doesn't feel strange or whatever. But a lot of people do what, you, what you're t describing, where it's like you you pick and choose what you want and kind of make it up as you go, right? Like, I mean, I ran out of the abyss, uh, you know, out of the adventure book. But I remember, like, what happened in my game was like totally just it wasn't in the book at all. It just was like, oh, yeah, well, this, my player did this crazy thing, so you kind of just have to make it make it up as you go. And uh, uh, yeah, there's people who who lean one way or the other. If like I only do homebrew or I do both, and I think. You know, we're, we're in the center is 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 a good place to be too. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Uh, these are there are so many good questions to throw out there. Um, first of all, I also want to make sure I mentioned your your shirt, Alice. That's an awesome shirt. Yes, beware the demogorgon. Ooh. I got this at Stream of Annihilation. It's a good and one. And my sister wants to steal it from me so bad, <laughs> and I'm like, no. <laughs> I think those are available at uh, at uh, We Love Fine. I think they can. She can get one, maybe. Oh, good. Oh, she has a birthday coming up. Ooh, Ooh. yeah, maybe you can get it for her. I got you know. a cool one too. It says, "I defeated the Demogorgon." Yeah, Which, I don't have the balls to worry about one, but I love that you do. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Ultimately, I am the Demogorgon. If you played so, out of the abyss, there you go. Right. I wanted a shirt that says, "I am." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a Demogorgon DM. Like I can. See, yeah. It, that works. That's right. You've got two heads right now. You've got Gerwin and uh, and your own there. Totally. Exactly. And we have Luna sleeping in our lap. <laughs> he, she's uh, she's the Cerberus of uh, of her story. <laughs> uh, so uh, Kim, I've been actually wondering this too. Uh, Dancing with Chaos asks, uh, where did you get your DM screen, and how, uh, how or how did you make it if you made it? Oh, okay, guys. Amazon. <laughs> it's a toy. It's a kid's toy castle. That you no way, on. really. Um, yeah, I think if you search, the thing is, it, I changed it. Like it's supposed to be in a different shape, but you can move around the um, pieces to make it like a DM screen shape. Um, wow, I don't know if anybody's ever done that. Like you know, buy a toy and adapt it for DM screen. Well, I wanted a castle, so <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, because because I think I didn't have a huge knowledge of D and D before we started playing. I kind of just created stuff myself, <laughs> like oh, they have a screen to hide there. I didn't realize that some people have the cheat sheet rules behind there, mm. which you know is really helpful mm -hmm. actually um i just thought they were hiding their roles so i was like oh i just need something to hide my roles in my notes of like the monsters that are coming and hide the little minis of the monsters that are coming um i didn't realize like D, &D has a really awesome one that has all the you know basic cheat stuff which is really helpful to have right in front of you um, it is yeah i i mean i play different ways you know from nothing in front of me uh, to uh, more of your style thing where it was just like a, a you know, a, a opaque screen. It didn't really matter what it was. But definitely having the ones with the stuff you're going to refer to often is, uh, yeah, super helpful. And the new one, we have a new screen coming out, I think. Let me check my notes. It is coming out in September. Yes. Ooh. The Dungeon Master screen reincarnated, it is called. Um, and that was the one you might have seen at Stream of Annihilation. Uh, it's coming out September 19th. Is that the one that I got at Stream of Annihilation? It might be. Does, that, does it have a red dragon on the front of it? Yes. Yeah. Ooh. That red dragon uh, by uh, uh, Tyler Jacobson. Uh, it, that's actually in a conference room here in the Wizards of the Coast building, uh, the entire painting. So we always love that uh, that image. He did a great job with that. So it is coming out soon. You'll the castle, it. it actually also comes with a little 
like it came with like trees and a little cannon and um Aww. and and like uh, uh, soldiers and stuff but i don't use this mm-hmm. <laughs> Yet, until you do like the, uh, you know, by the way, you guys go through a time warp and you're in medieval times. I feel like if I ever jammed, I would like mix like history with jamming. I like like D&D Civil War edition and have like you find yourself among the Confederacy in the swamps of South Carolina. <laughs> like, I don't know. I love those historical choose your own adventure games. And I think that I don't know. I could I could see that's where my mind would go. That'd be really cool. You should totally do that. <laughs> yeah, and educational. Like I was homeschooled, so I, my mom only let us play games that were educational mm-hmm. in very like classic school way. And so that was my favorite way to learn history was by reading choose your own adventure books. Um, there's of course the copyrighted ones, but then uh, she found like these homeschool curriculum history versions. And I don't know that'd be fun if I had kids and I homeschooled them like to play D and D history. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's a great idea. That would be, ooh. I think it'd be fun even I mean, obviously the educational part is huge, but like I mean, yeah, I love that alternate history idea that like what happens yeah. if or you could go the other way around. Like what if you're playing as a, 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 a you know, a World War One troop or, you know, or whatever, and then that, they get transported into the fantasy world and they have to like yeah. deal with, you know, the changing things there. Yeah. Yeah. I love ooh. all that stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of great alternate history novels too that that play on all those things that uh, I I get a kick out of for sure. Yes. Maybe avoid the Civil War. That's a touchy subject right now, though. It is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, oh, this is from Obo Crazy. Uh, hi, Lauren. Uh, if you're still in the chat, uh, she asked in Twitch, uh, "Are you guys going to any other cons besides, uh, uh, you know, Erica and Rachel at, at, at SDCC? Are you going to be at PAX or anything else like that?" We're we'll be at TwitchCon. TwitchCon. Actually, I don't know. Are we allowed to announce that? I don't know. You, well, <laughs> may or may not be at TwitchCon. <laughs> um, that's all we really have on. Yeah, I can't think of any other cons. Uh, Erica and Rachel actually have been more in charge of this stuff, so I mm. think they're in the chat. So Eric and Rachel can respond in the chat. They're in on. They're the events team of uh, Girls Guts Glory. Yeah, I just, I was like, Erica, I can't just deal with all the emails and events and things. (laughs) I'm editing. Yeah, you're like, I'm busy. I can't do this. (laughs) That's awesome. Uh, So, okay, so this is a question for Gerwin. Uh, uh, Do you like the Spice Girls? Hell yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs> and then to you guys, which uh, which Spice Girls uh, would would you be? <laughs> <laughs> when I was little, and you got the camo was... on right now, you got the camo, so you're pretty much Scary Spice, right? Mm. When I was little, I would always say Ginger was my favorite. <laughs> I don't know why, but I I actually was Posh Spice for Halloween. Oh. A few years back, we did a really good. Um, we had all the Spice Girls. And it yeah. Was it was really good. Did that? Did your boyfriend at the time go as the uh, soccer player? No, I. This was a girls only. Oh, good. We had one of our um, uh, our gay friends. We went to, into West Hollywood down, um, and he went as our manager, and he was wearing <laughs> like a. Oh, like nice. A, Shirt. But really, he just went with us and came up with something. But By the way, kudos to your uh, nailing that dirty dancing move on the beach. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Having yeah, tried that many time. times, that's hard. <laughs> I know. I've been on. I've been on many vacations recently. <laughs> um, no, no crime in that. <laughs> not at all. Did, yeah, we nailed. We nailed that. It took us probably four tries um, <laughs> to get the right balance of where he was holding me so that I didn't fall forward. That is always the danger. Or going like uh, sometimes I, it's been a while since I've done it, but like it would it would we'd go too far, and you're like, oh yeah, upsy daisy, <laughs> upsy daisy. So yeah. on the beach was a good idea to do it on the beach because at least falling backwards into sand is not as bad as sand rocks. Sand can be rough. Thank you. <laughs> he, he's he's very strong though, so he he had me. It was it was solid. And then you got to do it in the water, and that makes it even even better. <laughs> Uh, what? All right, so we got a couple more questions we want to get to, and then we're going to finish this out with a preview of Episode 7. Yeah. Um, so will you guys be having any guests in your future streams? Maybe Greg Tito. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, 
would love to have guests. Yes. We haven't, we're still figuring out what our future streams are going to look like, but um, hopefully we will have guests and, 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 you know, people in and out. Fun stuff. Um, yeah. And, and uh, uh, we, we talked about this in a couple of interviews, but, you know, have you had any more thoughts on streaming versus edited or, you know, doing both? I think we're moving toward streaming. Um, but we, we all have to get together and discuss. We have a meeting coming up where Ooh. we have to like, like gather as a group and like talk about lo logistics. Um, one of the, one of the trickiest things is there's all of us and we all have very different schedules and we all love to play, but usually it's more of a last minute spur of the moment thing. Like, um, are you guys free tomorrow night? Great. Yeah. And then, so trying to like plan ahead on a regular time thing sometimes can be a little tricky, but, but it's not to say it's impossible. Um, we just need to like convene and after summer ends, I think we'll have a lot more flexibility. Um, cause summer has been really busy for all of us. But yeah. 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 It's yeah. We'll, we'll see. We want to, we're definitely moving towards streaming. Um, but we just have to figure out how to, how to do it. Cause also, uh, yeah, we just, cause also we have girls who are in and out, like we'll come in for a game and you know and then they won't be there the next week and then they'll come back so it's figuring out like will that work um yeah, yeah just figuring it all out basically. right and at least it'll be easier you know on the post-production side for you so to be like all right it's already out it's done yeah, yeah. it'll be easier for sure right but we'll uh, just see we're working on it i i think it sounds super exciting um and i'd love to see because I, I like both i like both doing you know edited stuff that gets more like to the and heart of what the drama actually is continue doing both things you yeah. know Continuing our adventure one, uh, where we left off, edited, and then streaming. But we'll just see. Who knows? You know, we all have a bunch of projects. Alice is working on a show right now. Um, Sujata's working on a show. I have a children's book that's getting published. Ooh, and congratulations. Project, so it's figuring out how to, you know. Balance all those things. Place. Yeah. The spinning of plates begins. Yes. <laughs> Exactly. I understand that. So one final question for you, Alice, and then we'll get to a little bit of announcements and then the preview for episode seven. Um, and I, I apologize. I don't know who this character is, but would you like to see the relationship with Duder? Oh, Duder. Duder. Yes. So Duner was from season one. Um, Kim, in preparing to DM that campaign for us, asked us all to write out our backstories so she could incorporate um, little bits and pieces. And Dooner is um, a river gnome that when I was a little kid, I had a crush on him. He's like really skilled with animal handling. And I just thought that was like the bee's knees. And um, she brought him back. And I can't remember ex what were the circumstances of how Dooner came Dooner, into that. Dooner was a, he was the fox, remember? Yeah. Um, he was trying to help his little sister. And then he took the, the witch's bracelet. Yes. So yes, I would love I would love to have Dooner come back. I feel like I could have played with that more in the game, but I think I at the you time I was I was shocked, and I think um, I think I was also overwhelmed with some other things that were going on simultaneously at at that moment. Um, but yeah, like I think I think it's fun to give your character outside goals than what are necessarily in the campaign at the moment, mm. um, and just because it keeps it keeps like character motivation alive and it probably keeps things a little more interesting to, I don't know. It, it keeps it more interesting for me to play because my ears are always perked for certain family names uh, that I might come across. And, and yeah, and it, it, we came across Lala's family during a game. It was not filmed, but um, her going back there. So yeah, it's, uh, it's fun to incorporate their backstories into the campaign. So. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And good on good on you, Kim, for mining their uh, uh, you know what you, they thought was just a throwaway uh, you know assignment. Write up your character backstories, whatever, and then be like, da, 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 I can use all this. Yeah, I love it. Um, and so uh, Erica and or Rachel are yelling at you in the chat, saying that you need to update the character sheets on the website. And they said, win, they said, <laughs> Greg, tell Kim. So I'm telling Erica, you, Erica, she can do it. <laughs> she can. <laughs> you're giving. You're delegating a lot of responsibility. <laughs> oh God, she's been doing so much. It needs to be delegated. <laughs> Show me how to do it. I'll do it. Like, or I can look it up. Yeah. yeah. 
Make it happen. Make it happen. Because uh, people definitely want to see, you know, where you guys are at now. And uh, I'm sure any more, any new details, you know, uh, uh, that things have, you know, oh, you've met this, this the, the Dooner character. And be like, oh, what does that mean? Right. That'd be really cool yeah. to see. Uh, and we'll host it on our site, too, if you want, uh, as, a, as a double duty to make sure people know uh, what's happening. Awesome. Cool. All right. So I'm going to do a couple uh, uh, minutes of announcements. You guys, uh, you guys are good. I guess, right? Uh, well, so thank you so much for, for coming in and talking to us. Uh, and then we'll end out with uh, the... Uh, bye, Luna. <laughs> we'll bye end guys. out with the uh, uh, the preview of Episode 7 right after that. And we'll talk to you guys next week uh, for Episode uh, 7. That'd be super cool. Yeah. Who, who's going to be on next week, by the way? Um, let me look at my little schedule. Okay, cool. Well, while you do that, I'll go run through uh, uh, some more fun announcements, Okay. Uh, Idol Champions for the Forgotten Realm of the Forgotten Realms from Codename Entertainment. We announced that very recently, um, but they have been announcing tons of fun heroes at idolchampions.com that you can play with. Now, it's an idol game. That means you throw people out on uh, adventures, so party members you might recognize uh, from uh, all kinds of Dungeons and Dragons lore um, are being announced. Minsk and Boo uh, are on there, as well as... Uh, Brunor Battlehammer uh, has already been announced. Uh, Ashara, a new uh, kind of character, an Arakokra, uh, so a, a bird person is going to be there. Um, all those are now being announced uh, at idlechampions.com. You send those guys out on adventures, collect loot, kill monsters, get XP, and they're always doing this all in real time. And you can kind of optimize it a little bit, change things to where they want to go and make it a little bit better. You can collect monsters and loot, um, but you can always keep them running in the background. So it's a fun thing to, to be in. A, that's going to be on Steam uh, coming up in quarter three. So look uh, for more information about that on Twitter at Tried Idol Champions. Also, Dragon Plus issue 14 is recently out, and that is awesome because it has an adventure written by Curtis Weeb, uh, the writer of Rat Queens. Have you guys read Rat Queens, by the way? The Girls Got Glory guys? Have you read them? It's no. it's amazing. They uh, you you should have you in, in comic books at all. It's an all girl D and D party uh, that goes on adventures, and uh, it's very adult themed. So they're into drinking and and carousing and all that stuff. Uh, it's a really great adventure. I've only read the first ten issues. I know there's more that are out there. Uh, and Rat queens. Rat queens. Yeah, and that's the name of their Boy. group. That's the name of their their adventuring party. Um, right. And uh, uh, Curtis Weave is the writer, and he wrote an adventure which uh, kind of a, uh, encapsulates some of the, all those characters and what they're all about. And that's available only on Dragon Plus. So go check that out. It's an iOS or Android app, or you can get it on dragonmag.com uh, to download all that. And there's a lot of information about Tomb of Annihilation and a lot of other products that are coming out soon. So pretty badass there. Uh, speaking of Tomb of Annihilation, that's coming out in September 19th on a wide release everywhere. It'll be in game stores on September 8th. Um, and uh, all the, the the streaming that has been going on is all kind of leading up to, uh, to that release. But you'll be able to check out uh, uh, Tomb of Annihilation story first in Neverwinter. It's an action MMO that's based uh, on the uh, PC, Xbox One, and PS4, and uh, Tomb of Annihilation is out on July 25th on PC. July 25th, that's next week. You can get right into uh, Chult, experience all that right uh, next week, so that's pretty exciting. Um, the guys over at Cryptic Studios uh, and Perfect World Entertainment have been doing Lots of great work down there. Uh, Thomas Foss uh, was at the stream of Annihilation, and he did a pretty good job during the uh, Meat Grinder episode. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, so, so he's been hard at work trying to get this all ready to go on July 25th, and the Xbox One and PS version, PS4 version will be coming out a little bit later. Uh, my friend Shelly Mazanoble, who hosts the Dragon Talk podcast with me, she's got an awesome game coming out, Betrayal at Baldur's Gate, is coming out October 6th. Um, if you know about Betrayal at House on the Hill, it's kind of a horror-themed uh, modular uh, game. You, you create a mansion. You basically play as a, a, you know party mentors going on creating a mansion. We took that idea and put it into the city of Baldur's Gate. So you're a and d adventurer who is uh, exploring the city tile by tile, and then uh, something happens. A, 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 something is triggered. And uh, one of the one of the party members becomes a bad guy. So it's a cooperative game until one person becomes, or or multiple people, depending on the scenario. A scenario is uh, uh, unleashed, and then you have to kind of finish it all out. It's kind of fun. It makes every single time you play uh, a betrayal game feels completely different. It's kind of similar to a D and D game, um, but it's something you can just open up a box and play in about an hour, which is fantastic for times when you don't have a lot of time to play. You don't have four hours for a D and D session. 
Or you want to get more people into experiencing Dungeons & Dragons who love board games, it's a nice way to, to get them uh, a little bit of a taste. So, again, that's October 6th, and I'm excited about that. We talked about minis earlier. WizCon, WizKids Icons of the Realms, Tomb of Annihilation minis are coming out also very soon, July 26th. So some of the things that we were talking about um, as far as Yuan T, I think there's an incentive box that actually has the green devil face. Um, uh, uh, actually a physical th- item as well as little potions and stuff. It's very cool. I love things that are in miniature. I recently just uh, 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 have been going over Twitter feeds of people who are making like individual like props and things uh, for bookshelves uh, uh, in a miniature form. So like a wizard's bookshelves with scrolls and stuff on it. I love all that stuff. And uh, WizKids has been making really great, fantastic uh, uh, minis uh, in line with our, our Tomb of Annihilation storyline, but also stuff that we don't have never had minis of before, like the Modrons. I think there's two different Modrons in the Tomb of Annihilation mini set. Uh, and if you don't know what those are, look them up. They're, they're some of my funniest uh, monsters. They're basically um, from the uh, the the mech realm, the mech mecha plane, and they're all about order. Uh, but they also screw up all the time. It's kind of it's kind of funny. They're like little you know guys who screw up and are robots at the same time. Uh, anyway, our streaming is going uh, super well today. Uh, we're going to be throwing it to Acquisitions, Acquisitions Incorporated, the C team, at 3.30. Um, there is no critical role this week because they're all at uh, San Diego Comic-Con, so finally we have a night off from them. But then uh, tomorrow we have uh, High Rollers Uncharted Territory at 12 noon, our time, Pacific time, um, and Dragon Friends at 7 p.m. Pacific time. Obviously, in their own time zones. Yay, Dragon Friends! They're (laughs) they're totally on different time zones and things like. They're actually in the future. They'll be doing it on Saturday. It's crazy. Uh, I say that every time I talk about it, but it does it does make me nuts the fact that they are basically in the future. And then next week, of course, next Monday, we have uh, uh, we've been hosting this awesome show by Danny Hartel, who made the Batiri Goblin costumes during Stream of Annihilation. She started up a show called uh, Craft Hags, uh, in which she's putting together. uh, I'm not sure what she's doing this time, but last time she did um, uh, like a dungeon like a dungeon wall like how to create a dungeon wall as a backdrop in case you ever wanted to use something like that Um, but she is super creative at creating like real-time props and uh, she does that live 12 noon to 2 p.m. on Mondays Uh, a dragon talk will be back uh, at 2 p.m. I will be I think talking to Jeremy Crawford uh, for another sage advice at 2 p.m. Um, as well as James Wyatt, uh, who creates the Plane Shift articles uh, that lets you take uh, D and D rules and set them in the realms of magic. So the most recent one is based in Amonkhet, which is a kind of Egyptian-themed uh, magic realm uh, with lots of gods. And uh, James uh, basically created this uh, uh, forty to fifty page PDF on how to incorporate some D and D rules in with magic, so you can basically play as a planeswalker or play as a different race in Amonkhet. Super cool! I suggest you check that out. It's on both the magic and the D and D site. Probably the easiest way to do that, rather than me giving you a URL, is to say just search Plane Shift Amonkhet, uh, which is spelled. Oh, I don't know how that right here in front of me. A it starts with an A. I know that. <laughs> Uh, on Tuesday, we're back with Dice Camera Action. Uh, it's episode 57. Um, Chris Perkins is running the Waffle Crew through some amazingly uh, interesting, dramatic moments. There was a, a spoiled wedding and then a travel through time, I believe, in the most recent episode. It's pretty, pretty, pretty exciting. We've been speaking to Anna, uh, Jared, and Holly most recently on Dragon Talk. Um, and uh, they uh, have great things to say about Chris Perkins' storytelling. And you guys should check it out if you haven't. Definitely the last, like, six or seven episodes have been exemplary. Uh, so uh, I would definitely recommend that. And then Maze Arcana is back. They were on break this week because they were at also at San Diego Comic-Con. They are back for live play on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Um, and at Wednesday at 7 p.m. And uh, Miss Clicks uh, is also taking the week off next week. So we will be rebroadcasting that uh, episode uh, from the previous week. Great time to get up in all this uh, stuff that's going on. And I can't mention enough that Force Gray Season 2 is going to be fantastic. Seeing, I can't wait to see Joe Manganiello and Deborah Ann Wall uh, jump into playing together. I was a big fan of True Blood when it was running. And those two... Uh, playing Dungeons and Dungeons together on a show that I'm affiliated with is pretty much like a dream come true. Not to mention the other awesome cast members, uh, Udkar Shambodkar, Dylan Sprouse, and Brian Pesane, and Dungeon Master Matt Mercer, who you guys know very well um, from him running your session during Stream of Annihilation. 
Crazy. I can't believe it's all coming together. That's July 31st. Um, uh, I know Dylan for, will be in the chat uh, at 5 p.m. Pacific time to uh, talk over what's going on with this character, what things are happening, and uh, I'm, I'm sure more of the other ones will be there as well. But it'll be an exciting premiere on the Twitch channel here. We got so much stuff going on, it's even hard to get out of my mouth. How do I do it? I don't know. Uh, and thank you for the link. Oh, good. Uh, uh, shout out to Pelham Green for putting the link for Plain Chef um, and Cot in the chat. Thank you for that. Oh, and all these links are in here. Dude, Pelham is a good guy. He's throwing it up there. Shout out to him. Uh, and of course, thank you to Sean uh, Mayofsky for helping get all the video going. He gave me the, the, the throne horn sign, so I feel like I have to do it back to him. Uh, well done, everybody. And we're going to close this out with uh, a preview of episode seven next week eric and rachel so you guys can hear all about their um time at comic-con awesome i'm gonna i'm gonna ping them with so many questions and uh they had better wear their girls Guts glory costume at least once <laughs> i think it's really hot their costumes are hot so oh that was what they were talking about so that's what the lilu costume is for <laughs> that makes a lot more sense now mm -hmm. <laughs> all right but the wings you could just wear the wings at least that's not too bad all right. Well, I'm going to hear all about it and pester her with all those questions next week. Um, uh, Thursday at 2 p.m. Pacific time. <laughs> uh, but until then, I'll leave you with this uh, preview that Kim uh, awesomely put together. <laughs> Thanks, you guys, again for coming by. And uh, we won't see you, you guys next week, but we'll see you guys uh, again soon, I'm sure. Yes. All right. <laughs> Bye. Preview it up. Bye, guys. I whip out my, my thorn whip. And I locked it, the entire stack open to drag them all oh. to the ground. Takes his spear and stabs through your armor. What? Boba! Ten. Blood gushes oh. out, and you take seven points of damage. Oh, oh my god! Gula!